Please be seated. So a couple of things this morning, as you can see, I'm not wearing a tie because I will be playing the role of liturgist. Pastor VJ Kumar, who uh, is uh, a pastor uh, over in Scotch Plains, uh, he's giving a service now, and so he'll be here probably about 10, uh, 10 40 or so. But I want to begin, I'm going to put uh, our, our two interns on the spot, uh, because uh, we have an intern uh, uh, starting today, and Patrick, uh, for those of you on Facebook, Patrick has been the key in, in, in making Facebook work. And so, so Patrick, I'd like you to come up, if it's okay, and I'd like you to introduce yourself and where you're from. And, uh, you know, this is September, we're beginning school, we're beginning other things, and this is kind of the, the, the official beginning of the church. Amen? So, so Patrick, tell us uh, where you're from originally and uh, where you're in school. Morning, church. Morning. Um, I am Patrick Lavin Nemo. I'm a Nigerian and I'm a student, second year student, Masters of Divinity at Trinity Theology Center in Madison, New Jersey. Okay. 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 So, uh, uh, you have been heading the Facebook page for technology and hopefully as we grow the church, helping with Sunday school and some other things going forward. So just thank you, Ben. It's just been a blessing for me to have you here. We're just getting to know each other for this first month. But, uh, but thank you so much. Josie, would you come up, please? So Josie, I just met today in person. We talked. She was interviewed, and she's, uh, uh, she'll tell a little bit about herself. Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Josie Jasmine. I'm originally from Haiti. I'm going to um, MBTS, and went to theological seminary. This is gonna this is gonna be my third year. So thank you. I'm here. I want to learn from you, and um, I'm gonna also give whatever I have so I can help you. Thank you. I love you guys. So one of the things, uh, Josie, we're really just trying to decide where is that I understand that there are a lot of a lot of 20 and teenagers and others that are part of the families of this church. And so I'm talking to Josie that really, you know, really, how can we make this service meaningful to people of all ages? Amen. And so Josie's, you know, obviously, you know, they're both a lot younger than me, so that's why uh, they're, they're part of this. And so um, I, it's really, really important to uh, to do that. Josie, I may ask you today, if you wouldn't like to come up and take the mic, I'd like you to, you know, we, we begin the service, this is her first service with us, with uh, kind of testimony and prayer. And so, because the camera can't turn around, it's hard for me to go back there. So if you could, could go back. So we, we want to begin, as we always do, with some prayer and testimony. We had just another wonderful Wednesday morning Bible study and discussion. Amen? Amen. I know I felt, I felt the Spirit. I felt great throughout the day and throughout the week. So that's very helpful. But people brought up a lot of prayer requests, and, and, and people brought up some, some good reports of people that we pray for. Prayer is powerful. Amen? Amen. Prayer is, is powerful. So let's begin with uh, uh, any particular prayer request. I'm walking around with you. Raise your hand, and we'll uh, get in the back. In the back. Get about COVID because we have more murder rate than what COVID is. 
Thank you, thank you so much. So I don't know if, if the Facebook crowd heard that uh, a young lady was recently killed by her boyfriend. And, and you know, our community is struggling. Our community is struggling, it's struggling with poverty, it's struggling with emotional challenges, it's struggling with gang warfare. And, and who but the church? Who but the church should be here to support and guide? And so, so our hope is to come in. from all of the churches and, and the Attorney General was here. Most of the discussion was exactly about what you said, about the struggles, the emotional challenges, the, the crime, the uh, unnecessary incarceration of some people, the breaking up of families, and that, that we, need to, we need to pay attention to COVID, but we also need to pay attention to this. And as a church, and, and, and please, and as your pastor, please bring these concerns because this is near and dear to my heart. That, you know, why are we here? Are we here just to study the Bible and go home? Are we here to live the Bible? Are we here to, to, to serve our neighbors? Faith without acts is worthless. So thank you. So, so uh, thank you for bringing that, and, and we, we feel your heavy heart, and we will pray. Yes? Good uh, morning, church. Good morning. I'm out there in the the sand. The young lady who was killed, her mother is a homeowner and a friend of mine. Oh, yeah. So I just found out this morning my heart is heavy on something. So this is this been a tragedy. So pray for the mother, Barbara Austin, and her entire family. And that was her only child. Wow. Wow. So yes, her name is Barbara Austin. Uh, and I want you to like to pray for my friend uh, Tammy, her mother, is going through her second round, I mean her last two rounds of radiation. And I just want you to keep the Jenkins and Bowman family in your prayers. Because I found that out. And um, pray for my friend named Remy. She just found out her mother had uh, ovarian cancer. So we're just going to pray at home, you know, just pray for healing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So uh, that's all I have to say this morning. Just pray for the church family and all the victims that had the suffering. This storm that just passed us. Okay. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. um, the church, the church, a uh, uh, report, the church had some water in the basement. Miguel and, and team were on top of it, but the parsonage, and, and Pastor Jerry, the parsonage, the parsonage, the whole basement was, was destroyed? Yep. Is, that, is that a full basement? Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, this was no joke. This this was no joke. I mean, I I, I had about a foot of water in my, in my basement, and, Weeks in my roof, but thank God everybody's okay. But you watch the national news, you saw people, you know, it was like Katrina. You saw people right in this area on rooftops being rescued by helicopter. And so, uh, um, so it's, it's important. It, it, it's, it's funny, I was actually moved to tears because I'm part of a, a group that's called the National Speakers Association. And uh, it's a group of people who are professional speakers, and I do some of that uh, professional speaking. And uh, um, and they called me from Tennessee. I was called from Tennessee. I was driving down actually to a funeral. I'll talk about it in a second. Yesterday, and they said, "Well, we're, we're, we have a foundation. Are you okay? We need to be funded." And this organization, a nonprofit organization, to do that again, I said, "I'm fine. Give it to people who need it." But a lot of people are, are struggling. And there's so many good people in the world. Amen. And really brought me to tears to say, "You know, we need to bring together. You know, TV pulls together all these folks that really aren't great people." We celebrate these people that aren't great people. You know, we've, we've, got to, we've got to support each other. We've got to stop looking to Amen. folks outside of the church. Amen. Because it's the church's role. Well. I'm sorry, Joseph. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh there's a, a, a gray suburban. Um, the passenger window is open and it's about to rain. Um, a gray Subaru. Uh, Subaru, I'm sorry. A gray Subaru. And the passenger window is open, it's about to rain. So if, you, uh, if it's out here, that's your car. Um, it's your car. Nobody in the car. Good. 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 If it was a Lamborghini, I would have run out. <laughs> but church, some other, other prayer requests, some other thoughts. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 
going to church. Um, I just like a uh, prayer request for my, my family. Uh, the Campbell family is my first cousin. She's Campbell by marriage, but my parents like me, but uh, she passed away suddenly. She was talking on the phone on Friday to um, my uh, sister in law, asking about my brother who was in rehab right now. And then Saturday morning, we find she was dead. We don't know how well she was in the house by herself, but <clears throat> some of the people we pray for, then we pray for, um, we may not know the name, but just pray for people who are in distress, either ill or otherwise. So, and also I'd like to lift up praise for Gary Spamba, his cousin died um, yesterday, I believe it was. He just went to a funeral for one of our firefighters. And um, <clears throat> I'd like to um, ask us to continue to pray for those people who take their time to try to protect us. Um, the firefighter um, lost hope and committed suicide. So, um, the funeral was yesterday. And so that time, you know, you, you just have to keep these people in prayer because the stress level and the, the um, loss of hope is real. And so we have to support each other. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, yes, yes. Thank you so much. We'll give you exercise. No problem.
God, we come to you with heavy hearts today. We know that the Austin family is in deep, deep pain. Dear God, we know that so many people are struggling with emotional challenges. So many people are struggling with, with, with psychological issues. So many people are struggling with physical issues. So many people are struggling with emotional issues. And, and, and dear God, help us to understand the spiritual, the spiritual support that you and your Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit provide are the answers we need. Dear God, please help us as a church, as a covenant family, to reach out to people who are struggling. Help us to develop stronger ears to hear when people are in pain, even though they may say they're okay. Do God, help us to really become your disciples so that we can, can reach out to folks. We can talk to people we know and people we don't know. That we can actually support our, 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 our friends and, 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 and carry scripture to people and, and, and carry prayer to people and teach people power of prayer. Amen. Dear God, please uh, please help us to really be thankful for those who have, have, have survived uh, uh, chemotherapy. Uh, there are a number of folks I know in the audience who have survived chemotherapy. Help those who have, who have recovered from illness. Please watch over those dear God, we know you have a plan and some of us may fall into illness and help us to know that you are there with us every step of the way. Dear God, this, this emotional challenge in, in our community and really throughout the world is more significant than many of us realize. Dear God, you've heard me and you've given me this idea of urban traumatic stress disorder. Just living in an urban area causes pain and, and suffering in ways that, that other folks, policymakers, sometimes don't understand. Help us remember our first responders who not only are dealing with their own issues, but as they support and save others, they take on the issues of the people that they're helping. Please help all of us. Because we know the answer. The answer is finding support in your church. The answer is finding prayer. The answer is finding Jesus. Help us to understand and help others understand that the only way to survive this chaotic world is through Jesus Christ. Yeah. To God, we are about to, to, to start a, a, a hymn sing and, and help the Spirit be in this place and help us to sing our favorite songs uh, as we begin to, to sing and then go to the call of worship. Please watch over Pastor Kumar and his brother and brother-in-law who are in India dealing with COVID. Watch over all the people who are suffering from COVID around the world. And dear God, if it's your will, they will make it through. Please support Pastor Kumar as he preaches this morning and preaches every first Sunday and as he administers communion. We're so thankful for him. We're thankful for the Methodist Church. We thank you for life, dear God. You may be pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we're going we're gonna to start and uh, let Sister Julie kick us off. Oh, this is the day. Yeah. This is
Uh, we're going to move to the call to worship in your program. So, choir, you can, uh, you, can, you can take a seat. Relax. So, please stand for our call and response. We are called here this morning to learn of Christ's healing love.
bar has arrived. And uh, so uh, we started at 10. We, we had wonderful testimony, so we're, uh, we're at the prayer of confession now. So please join us, uh, join me in the prayer of confession. Patient Lord, you know us so well. We are fascinated by healing and can talk all day about the miracles. But we do not understand the compassion of Christ. We often say, just heal us, or just make me rich, or just make things no better at work, or other such deals, and then we promise our faithfulness and witness. But in our hearts, we just don't get it. Please forgive us, Lord, when our greed and fear get in the way of understanding. Help us to know the transformational power of your love, and get us ready to be faithful witnesses to you in all that we say and do. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have been healed. Praise to God who has given you life. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament uh, reading uh, is responsive as well. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, I like the informality of services. We don't want to be too high for Yeah. All right, we're going to get a responsive reading leader. If it, had been, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say,
Testament lesson, Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 37. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered the house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syro-Phoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that you may go, the demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee and the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in a speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his finger into his ear, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epathia, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded and beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Just be seated for a wonderful musical selection, the part of Jesus' method.
have to think a little bit about my accent. I know it. But I would like to speak slowly today. But I speak faster. Right? Dash, arm, bra. I have first. I like the dog very much. Right? After that, I had a white Pomori with two dogs together. Usually they go, go together, right? But I love them too. They love me too. Right? When I left my country, gone back, I left them back and I could not bring it here. I still remember them. I don't think they have survived it. Right? I'm talking about 38 years back. I don't think so. Okay. Most of the time, dear friends, when we think about dogs, we think of pet. Man's best friend. You heard about it, right? Yeah. Okay. Because they are loyal and loving. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. But there is another kind of dog, the vicious killers like wolves and coyotes. They are dangerous will kill even humans. Right? But there is another kind of a dog. The term dog can be used as derogatory term for a person. Have you heard about it? In my culture, they say that he is worse than a dog. Have you heard about it? I don't know this culture. Yeah? Right? Yes. They say it. So it has always bothered me when I read today's text. I might have uh, preached this other text for about a dozen times, that's the word. Right? But every time when you read the text, God speaks to us in a new way. Right? And I was worried why Jesus, the loving Son of God, gracious Son of God, compares this young woman, right? Young woman coming to him for help to a dog. The source of out of character, that's what I thought in the beginning. Did you feel it as you read this text today? Calling to that woman a dog, right? Did he mean she was nasty? She was vicious? Or come back? Why did Jesus compare this hurt, hurting mother a dog? Why did he do that? See, the theme of our today's meditation goes on that. Breaking down the Racial walls. <coughs> Breaking down the racial walls. May I take the liberty to say the theme as God's grace is only amazing grace when the fence is moved. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry for this. I had one and a half hours service there. That's why I need some. God's grace is amazing grace when the fence is moved. Let me give an illustration to you, a story. You might have heard this. It's a very well-known story. There was once an old, old reprobate. You know who is a reprobate? Lazy man. Right? Good for nothing man. Who had lived a wild and loose life, too much in love with gambling and alcohol. Right? If anybody is here like that, I can call him a problem. Okay, right? When he died, the local minister, I don't know whether people minister like me are dead, right? The local minister said, 
This worthless woman, man should not be buried in our sacred cemetery. He should be buried outside the cemetery, outside the fence, because he has lived a worthless life. Right? The minister thought the consecrated ground inside the fence was only for good and understanding and upstanding people. Right? He, he thought that, this minister. A year later, the minister was transferred, right? And the man's daughter came to the church to pay homage to him, her father. She could not find the grave outside the fence. She went over to the old caretaker and asked him what had happened to her father's grave. The, grave, the caretaker took her to the grave inside the fence and showed the, the, the grave of her father. Here it is. And she did not see a grave for that. No. My father's grave was outside the fence. How it possible that you brought it inside? Right? The caretaker said these words. Remember this. Madam, we did not move your father's grave. We moved the fence. <laughs> right? That's what happened here. That's what happened in the text. In our gospel text today, we hear a remarkable story of breaking the barriers or God's amazing grace. God's amazing grace. By stepping out into the region of Tyre and Sidon, Jesus has just moved the fence. God's grace knows no boundaries. You may be in Africa, I may be in Asia, some may be an American movement in a sense, or not yet. Right. What do you say, Pastor? Yeah. Everybody move here, right? Yes, I have some who also moved move everyone, our ancestors, right? The people of earthly ministry thought in Jesus' time, apart from them, especially the Jews, the people who are living outside the bounder, bounded border are Gentiles. I don't use that word. I, I, I hate that word. I would say the people of other faiths, the people of other color, right? They used to call them nowadays Gentiles and reprobates, immoral, impure, godless sinners. Harsh words, right? Very harsh. Can't take it. The boundaries were firmly set those days. So it was believed that people of the, on the other side of the fence are beyond the grace of God and love. The Jews of Jesus day believed that the region of Tyre and Sidon were pagan and they lived in pagan world. I hate, sorry to say, the word pagan. Who are we to say that those are pagan people? God loves it, right? Right? That is my stand. Right? Okay. But guess what? Jesus has just stepped outside the border. And in today's gospel, Jesus has moved the fence of God's grace, and God's grace is amazing grace when the fence is moved. Right? Yes. The Canaanite woman. And, but this today's text says, for you, the Syrophoenician woman, right? Use the word, the same. Okay, that she's from that, that region, the that's what she was called. But if you read Matthew and Mark, they say uh, about this lady as the Canaanite woman. In this, our story was a real turn off for the people of Jesus' day. Just like the ongoing fighting between Israelites and Palestinians today.
today. Yes, Canaanites were the people who were in constant conflict with the Jews. She was not a Jew, possibly a single mother. Her, her husband's name is not mentioned here. Possibly a single mother. A woman at the bottom of the social ladder, even in her own country, a real loser. The Canaanite woman was nobody. Why do I say nobody? Her name is not mentioned here. Can you see her name there? A Canaanite woman. A white woman. A black woman. A Asian woman. A, a, a brown woman. Name is not mentioned here. Think of her, the case here. Friends, this nameless woman was a person and uh, with a real need. Her daughter was sick. And as all parents know from their experience, when their child is sick, it becomes their own. Mothers who are here, think of it. Right? Anybody can leave the child, mother will not leave the child. Right? Same thing happened here. The father is not mentioned. Relatives are not mentioned here. Only mother. Mother was mentioned. The scene in today's gospel is highly unusual. Not only because Jesus stepped outside the boundary of Israel, but also unusual, she helped, he helped this nameless pagan woman. Yes. In those days, friends, a woman would never argue with a boy. I don't know today. If you go to Seneca, I don't know. In those days, you know, they cannot come in the public. If, you, if a woman comes in the public, they used to say different thing about her. Right? But this woman comes forward here. This woman is different. She risked making on herself an absolute fool of herself. They did, she did not think that what the people will say, public will say about her. Even as Jesus crossed the boundary into Gentile territory, this Canaanite woman crossed her social barriers and began pleading for healing, healing for her daughter and healing for her son. Friends, we might have heard from people talking that this man heals the sick. She might have thought, or she might have heard. There's a prophet in Jerusalem, his name was Jesus, he heals the sick and uh, makes the lame walk, blind to see, even delivers the demons. Surely she thought that he can make her daughter well. And she comes out to speak and shouts, Hey, you, son of David, listen to me and show me mercy. Think of it. She did not say Lord or whatever, he did not even say Jesus' name. He said, please have compassion on me. Heal my daughter. Overcoming, verbal abuse, scorn, ridicule, and even the dislike of the disciples. You know what happened there? The close disciple of Jesus did not like her. They were pushing at her, don't come in here to us. We are pure people, Jews. Right? You should not come and touch our, our teacher. Don't trouble our teacher. Go away. Right? The ridicule she had. But this Canaanite woman was persistent. Broke through, throwing herself at the feet of Jesus. Just think of it. What happens then? Even a few crumbs of God's love for my daughter's well-being would be sufficient. Think of it, the words he uses. Even the few crumbs of God's love for my daughter's well-being would be sufficient. Friends, here is the key of the whole story. Woman said Jesus, great is your faith. Woman said Jesus, great is your faith. Is Jesus saying you and me today, 
can say that a hey man, a hey woman, what is your faith? After all, ridicule she had from the disciples. God's grace is only amazing grace when the faith is born. God's grace is only amazing grace when the faith is born. Despite the very real obstacles, this unmade woman, Canaanite woman, persisted. I would like to underline the word persisted. Persistence. Persisted. She went to the right person. The only person we who could satisfy her deeper, deeper state. She had enough faith to believe that Jesus, the Son of God, was the answer to her need. What do you want, said Jesus? Friends, what do you want? Will be done good for you. Because your faith is great. What do you want? Will be done for you because you love, believe me. You believe that as the Son of God can heal your daughter today. Right? So let me ask you a question. When we go to the prayer every day, do we really believe that Jesus will heal us? Yes? In case that time doesn't happen, we go again to Jesus ask so the same problem. The Lord, this is my problem. Heal me. Go to see, learn from the Canaanite woman. She was persisting. She was persisting. Instantly we are told, friends, healing came to her home. Healing came to her home. Today's gospel story is not just about some anonymous Canaanite woman who experienced the healing power of God's grace. It is a story about the wildness of God's love. It is the story of wildness of God's love. To our surprise, God keeps drawing bigger circles, moving the fence lines out further. The purpose of inviting others into this life, transforming grace. Have you ever uh, sung the, this hymn, the uh, United Methodist hymn, uh, hymn 121? You, if you have the book, you just see. Hymn 121, 121, uh, written by Frederick William Faber. Frederick William Faber, if you see the, his name down very small. I will just read a few verses from there. He's talking about God's amazing grace. I just read that. There is a wildness in God's mercy like the wildness of the sea. There is kindness in God's justice which is more than liberty. There is welcome for the sinner and the more graces for the good. There is mercy in the Savior, there is healing in his blood. For the love of God is broader than the measure of the mind. And the heart of the eternal is more wonderfully kind. Right? How wonderful it is. Thank that the Frederick who wrote this. He understood God's amazing grace. Yes. Before God, we are all Canaanites. I'm sorry to say. Before God, we are all Canaanites. We are outside the fence. According to St. Paul, we have all sinned. Every one of us fallen short of our great good in our Christian journey. Along with this Canaanite woman, our lives are constantly tormented by an illness called what? Come on, what? Always tormented. The illness called yes, I am. What? Sin? Right? We are all sin. We are all sinners. An attitude of the heart that places oneself at the center of the universe and attempts to make everything else in life. When that view, along with this Canaanite woman, we are all in need of God's grace and, and salvation. Let me bring you to the Old Testament just in one minute. Or two. And the story of the Garden of Eden, you all know that, right? Who 
who do not know the, the, the story of the Garden of Eden. Oh, we are all Christians, we know. Right? We read Bible every day, we know the story of Eden. Right? Let me tell you here, we, in the, in the Garden of Eden story, we so soon discover that sin places us outside the Garden of Eden. Sin uh, places us outside the garden on the other side. All of us, all human beings, no races in between, everyone. But the grace of God through the death of Jesus Christ brought us inside the garden. Right? The grace of God, the love of God through Jesus Christ, his death brought us back into the Friends, a place of desolation, estranged from God, place of sickness, pain, struggle, and even death. Today's gospel story calls tired and sight. We are all there as the family woman in tired and sight. Friends, the story of the cross, on the other hand, reminds us that God stepped across the boundary of eternity and move the fence to invite us into the circle of his love. Let me tell you the witness of the mind. You have, I think, some of you given the witness today, right? Pastor Dale, is there someone in front of them given the witness, right? Right? Let me give my witness, right? You are my brothers and sisters, I am one with you. I will tell you my witness. My relatives were Hindus. Do you know Hindu religion? Do you see around Hindus around? I see that the Hindu temples are all in Edison, in Scotch Plains, and anywhere. Hindus, they believe in um, thousands of gods. They don't believe in Jesus. Even today, in India there are over 1.3 million people, they don't believe in Jesus. My ancestors were Hindus, they did not believe in Jesus. I am the fifth generation Christian, I tell you, that's so all I'm happy to say. I am the fifth generation Christian, right? But I thank to my great, great, great father who has accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know that why he has accepted Jesus Christ? God's grace is always amazing when the fence is He formed Jesus Christ, accepted Jesus Christ. His problems are gone, his demons are gone, his spirit, his evil spirit is gone. And he and his whole family accepted Jesus Christ. Today I am here. I thank them. Right? God's grace is only amazing grace when the fence is moved. Dear people of faith, this Canaanite woman has indeed shown us the way of persistent faith into the hearts of our Savior. The only one who can satisfy our deepest need. The only one who can give us a new heart to accept all the people in the world with no exception of race and creed. Right? Paul says in Galatians 3.21, if you have time, go home and read. In Christ, there is no Greek or Jew. In Christ, there is no male or female. In Christ, there is no master or female. We are all one in Christ. Right? Yes. The Canaanite woman was found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Are we today? Are we today? We do have evils in us. We do have problems in us. Are we find favor in Jesus Christ today? If we humble ourselves like that woman, down to earth, even today our Savior would heal us, our sickness and Provides, provide our needs. And to such people, people, Jesus will say always, great is your faith. Great is your faith. Let us pause for a moment today and ponder on our text and think what it gives us to do. Let's pray for a moment. Pause, closing our eyes. And let's see that what Jesus says to us, each one of us. Just for a moment, please close your eyes and ask God 
that God gave us this way. Dear friend, where do you see yourself in this story? You see, as the Jews of Jesus day, are the disciples who did not want this candidate woman come here to Jesus. Or maybe an outsider, a person on the other side of the fence. What is God's word to you this morning, my dear friend? Let us pray. Almighty God, graciously grant that your word, the story we read about Canaanite woman and her persistent faith that we have heard may be inscribed inwardly on our hearts. All this we pray for the honor and praise of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit.
gifts not be the crumbs of our lives, but justice for those overlooked by the world. Be healing for those broken by pain and grief. Be grace for those who long to be listened to and welcomed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Yes, thank you very much. And we will sing our last year of acapella choir to the uh, Yes, thank you. Friends, we are here to celebrate the Holy Communion, not ourselves with the Son of God who has given his own body and blood for the salvation of each one of us. Now shall we all stand and come to the Lord's table. This is home where all you are is the Lord's table. Right? And we do have the the, uh, the bulletin for the service. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to, thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, our Alpha and Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you we live and move and have our being. When we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people this way and spoke through prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. Jesus Christ, your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and suffering, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always with the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and, and said, Take it, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to him, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy 
their living sacrifice. In union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By his spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As you prepare your elements at home, those who are worshiping on online, remember that this is not covenant table, this is God's table. All are welcome. Dear friends, because there is one loaf, we who are many, though far apart, are one body. For we all partake of one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The body Christ broke for you because he loves you. Each one. Please eat your. Goes with that, like that. Yeah, he will hand it out. I'm sorry, I did not know the convention here. Just please take it. And also, as I said, the cup over which we give thanks is the sharing in the body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you because he loves you. Would you please open your pocket packets and separate the bread and wine? I know that it takes time. There is time for that. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for you and me, proceed. The cup over which we give thanks is the sharing in the blood of Christ, the blood of Christ shed 
for you and for me because he loves each one of us. Let us drink Jesus. Is that the prayer after the communion? That's in the bulletin. Please pick up your bulletin. Shall we say together the following prayer? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the state council members who are here, if it is possible, only if it is possible, is a request and uh, meet me after the service in the pastor's office or the general office. Just to speak one of these specific events, we should, we should decide before the annual uh, charge conference. Just five minutes. Maybe if you, can, if you could kindly make it, I am in the address. One of the things I'll add is that Pastor Kumar is leading. There's a lot of paperwork that the United Methodist Church requires. So he's really playing that. So we really appreciate your help in helping us get that paperwork done. So, so we appreciate it. Okay, have I on the way, Lord? Now and forever. 